What's up YouTube, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm gonna to show you how I made this really awesome black wood bowl, and I did it without painting it, without dyeing it, without staining it, and without burning it. It's pretty cool. I got this white oak slab that I cut up with my Alaskan chainsaw mill a few years back, and I actually did a video a little while ago on flattening this, so if you ever wanna see how to flatten a slab with a router, then click up there, watch that whole video. So this is gonna be great for our bowl, and I got this piece of round marble. This is actually a, a trivet for hot things. I think it's gonna be awesome for the base of our tray. So I can get an idea of the size we're gonna need. Uh, and I got one of these handy tapes and I think we're gonna need a bowl like um, that big. I got my board all milled up, so now it's time to actually cut the circles out for our tray. And to do that, I'm gonna use this nifty circle cutting jig. I don't get to use this very often, but it's really fun. I do like using it. So now, we're gonna tackle this in three different phases. We need to cut the outside perimeter for our circle. Then we need to move the router bit in a bit, and then route down to whatever depth we want. That's gonna be the rabbit that actually holds the marble base that's gonna sit in there. Then we'll move the router a bit further in and we'll cut all the inside out. This board's kind of thick. You're looking at about an inch and a half thick. You definitely don't want to take all that off with one or two passes. So we're going to make a lot of passes, shallow passes around and keep working our way down till we get all the way through, then move the router a bit and keep doing it. So it might be a little bit slow, but it's going to be much safer that way. The perimeter of the tray is all cut out. And then after I did it, I looked at it and it just seemed like it was a little bit chunky. So I moved the router bit in just a bit, did it again. That's why there's kind of an extra wide curve here, but now looks really good. So I've got the tray bottom and I put that roughly in the center and trace it out with a pencil. That's gonna tell me where we are going to ride out for the rabbits. So I'm going to reconnect all my jig move the router bit to just on the inside now of my trace line and I'm going to take a pass through and we're going to go down at least the thickness of our base. We need to do a little bit more because I would like to put some sort of ring on the inside out of wood that will hold the base in place. So we need to go, I don't know, whatever that is, three quarters of an inch, something like that until this sits right in place where we want it to be. You can see the rabbit that I cut. And now if we put our marble tray on here, it would drop right into place if it wasn't for this pesky center. So that is the next part. I need to move the router bit right over to this edge and we are going to route all the way through, remove the center part. That's actually going to give us a tray. And then we'll just have the last step of filling in this part here to keep that base in place.
Let's see how it works. All right, so this is the tray itself. We have our marble that will go right in here. And then this ring, friction fit right in. And then we can glue this in place. And then we can decide, do we want to keep this little reveal? I'm kind of thinking I might, I'm not sure. But once that's glued in, I can always sand this down a little bit if I want to reduce that. But overall, I'm super digging this one. Last night I glued the bottom ring into place and I kept the raised profile because I really liked the look of it. And I sanded the whole thing down to 180 grit. So now it is time to turn it black. To turn it black, we are actually going to make it have a chemical reaction. And to do that, we need to create iron acetate. Now, that's really easy for us to do. All we need to do is take some steel wool that you really wanna clean off with some mineral spirits just to make sure there's no oils and stuff on it. Put it into a jar, preferably an amazing pickle jar, and put in some regular vinegar. And then let it sit. I figure I'll let mine sit for two or three days. Then it should be ready to go and we can turn this tray pitch black. Okay, so I might not have hit my two to three day window. Things happen, I get busy. This is the result though. This black liquid here is iron acetate and it's pretty cool. Now what's gonna happen is the iron acetate is gonna have a chemical reaction to the tannins that are in the white oak. So I don't wanna just take this right out of the jar and apply it because it does have some like uh, grimy bits in there. So instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna filter it into a clean jar. Once we do, we will put this onto that. Now here is a super fun part. All we have to do is put this onto there. You can use a rag, you use a brush, you can use whatever you want to. I'm gonna use this foam brush. Watch how this works. It looks kind of light. And then look how dark it turns. It's pretty unbelievable how fast it will turn this wood black. There is a limit to how black it will get. I haven't found that if I put a ton of coats on it that it gets darker, but I also haven't found the need to get it darker. It gets really black nonetheless. There are a couple different home brews you can look up if you want to know more about how to ebonize oak like this. Some people like to um, put a little bit of black tea on it first. I can say that in my test that I did, black tea had zero effect on white oak. However, not all woods are the same. The reason why this works so great for white oak is because the amount of tannins that are in the wood. And that tannin level is different for each species of wood. So if you have some other woods like maple that do not naturally have tannins in it, then you can apply something like a black tea, something that has tannic acid that will then have the chemical reaction with the iron acetate like we're seeing here naturally. You just have to introduce that tannic acid to the wood to make this happen. A couple questions you may have. How long can you have the iron acetate sit in the jar for? 
Well, mine sat here for six weeks or so, and it is perfectly fine. So you can always know that in my shop, in my settings, that works. I think every shop is probably a little bit different. Also, does it smell funny? It smells a little vinegary, but that is gonna go away as it evaporates. Plus, I'm still gonna put a finish over the top of it. So there will not be a vinegary smell when I'm done with it. Third question, do you have to use a pickle jar? If you want it to look really cool, you do. No, actually, it does not matter what jar you use. As long I would just use a jar, something that can stand the chemical process of the vinegar mixing with the iron. I wouldn't pick something like a flimsy Dixie cup. How long does it take to dry? Well, about as long as it takes for water to evaporate, really, because it's just vinegar. So this will be dry in an hour or two or whatever. If you're worried about it raising the grain, I can say that it doesn't really raise the grain too much from my experience, but after I do this, I will um, knock it back with, you know, some 220 grit or something like that, really soft, just to make sure that the grain isn't raised before I apply my finish to it. You can see all these spots here where it dripped down. So if you do this, make sure that you put it only on parts that you want stained black. Make sure I didn't miss any spots. Oh, that looks so, so cool. And what's even cooler is when I apply finish to this, it will look even darker. Well, that's drying just for poops and giggles. Let's do a test. White oak board and a maple board. Let's see the difference. I mean, we have all of this liquid. It might as well not go to waste, right? I mean, we kind of know what white oak's gonna look like, but these are about the same size, so I thought this would be kind of a cool comparison. And every board is different, so this one might look a little bit darker or a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna dip some in here. Okay, so we got that one. And now we'll try the maple. Okay, I'm applying another quick coat on here. Just make sure we get nice and vinegary. Oh, this is not white oak, it's red oak, I forgot. Sometimes air dried white oak and red oak can look a little bit the same. It depends on the trees where they grow at, so like that, it can look a little bit the same. This actually is a piece of red oak, and I love that I made this mistake because what you can see is the difference. White oak, you see that same jar, how black it turned. Red oak, not so much because it doesn't have the same level of tannins that white oak has. Now let's look at the maple. This maple actually I think looks better than a red oak. It has this really cool smoky gray look. So if you're making something and you want it to have that weathered gray look, you could do this without having to go buy any sorts of stains. And it looks pretty even on there too. What else can I color? Hold on. Ah. Okay, I'm back. I got some walnut. Let's try walnut. I got walnut. I got a piece of babinga, because I figured let's look at an exotic wood. And I have a piece of cherry. Without finish, one already looks gray. So this will be interesting. Let's see how this turns out. Okay. So we'll put that on there. Babinga. I've never done this on exotic wood. Let's see if it um, explodes in my face. And let's roll with the cherry. Kind of a dark cherry already though. Okay, so what do we see in here? Check this walnut out. Whoa, that looks really cool, super dark. There's the other side, the natural side without any sort of finish on it. All right, the 
Bobinga. It looks a little darker than whenever I naturally finish, when I usually finish Bobinga. Usually Bobinga will have this um, reddish orangish, almost like a bright kind of color. It's kind of pops in your face, especially if you have some figured stuff. This is super muted, but it might still look really cool. It looks more like a, um, like a rosewood now, like a darker uh, rosewood than Bobinga. And the cherry, I think, looks like booty. This, but this might not have been a pretty piece to begin with, but um, I'm not a fan of that one. All right, once my bowl is dry, which it almost is dry already, holy cow, but once it's fully dry, I'm gonna apply um, just a couple coats of Osmo Top Oil to it. That's my go-to finish, super easy. And when I do, it's gonna make that black even more blackerist. Seriously, look how cool this turned out. I absolutely love it. It was a whole lot of fun and completely different. Just a fun way to get in the shop and make something a little bit off the wall. And I tell you what, this might be a great project for kids. You wanna get kids in the shop? This could be a really cool science project. Showing them how to take iron acetate and change the color of wood. Man, that's a great way to get kids involved in woodworking and that's what we need more of. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. I put out videos every week and we have a lot of fun here. Until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.